the human race has long held a fascination with the idea of the undead. Souls barred from hell itself and forced to roam the world forever as shambling corpses. They were the fodder first of ancient myth or legend, and later, modern entertainment. Yet, what walks the earth today is something entirely different. The remnants of mankind hide in isolated bastions, not out of fear of some supernatural plague, but something far worse, the Ridden. If their spread across the world had been far less rapid, then perhaps a more complete understanding could have been achieved before the collapse of human civilization. Instead, knowledge of their kind is limited to scattered facts and rampant speculation. All that can be said with some degree of certainty is that the Ridden are not dead bodies reanimated by some religious or mystical power, but rather the end result of a highly virulent parasite known as the Devil Worm. The parasite was first discovered by scientists analyzing prehistoric microbes in Pingulet National Park on the northernmost reaches of the Canadian province of Quebec. Their presence within the Pingulet Impact Crater has led some credence to the idea that the Devil Worm might have some extraterrestrial origin, although this was never definitively proven. Supposedly dormant specimens were transferred to research laboratories in Quebec City soon after, and it was likely here that they broke containment. The first infected likely came into contact with contaminated fluids, for the devil worm has proven to be especially endemic within pools, ponds, and other bodies of stagnant water. The early symptoms of those afflicted included headaches, fevers, and muscle aches, and were initially mistaken for a new strain of flu. Eventually, however, these symptoms became far more severe and included a loss of motor function, visible growths under discolored skin, and noticeably enlarged veins. The infected grew confused and irrational, and increasingly exhibited violent, psychotic behavior. By the time the true nature of the devil worm was realized, water sources for major urban centers across the east coast of North America had been contaminated. The spread of the parasite accelerated rapidly, appearing in Europe and Asia before a quarantine could be implemented. As the parasite developed, infected individuals lost their higher cognitive abilities, attacking the uninfected indiscriminately with a kind of reckless savagery. The vast majority of infected individuals, the so-called common ridden, never develop in any significant way beyond this stage. They instead become hosts or colonies for hundreds or even thousands of worms that entwine themselves in coils that then extrude from the body. These coils can protrude outward from the host's bone structure, most often its skull, in spiked hollow horns constructed from some kind of excreted resin. As part of a process still not fully understood, a host's eyes begin to glow with some kind of bioluminescent light. In other cases, however, worm coil formations can completely envelop a host's face, indicating that it uses some other method to sense its environment. They possess only a primitive animalistic instinct, however, only killing and feeding. The most dangerous ridden, however, are those that have somehow evolved from the first stages of infection into larger, more complex life forms. Unlike the common ridden, in which a single individual has been affected, these creatures appear to be fusions of not only multiple humans, but at times, various kinds of animals. An as yet unknown mechanism has wholly transformed their bodies down to the cellular level, in some cases enabling the use of entirely unique predatory mechanisms. Over a dozen such variants exist, roughly divided into several broad categories. Stingers are the most agile ridden, having developed a much higher muscle density and a second pair of arms. Most subvariants of Stinger are able to scale walls, and some are even able to eject a stream of adhesive mucus. Reekers, by contrast, appear far larger and resemble bloated carcasses. Upon contact with the uninfected, variants of Rika can violently explode, and it is likely these forms are actually incubation factories for the devil worm. Tall boys are marked by their highly mutated arms, which have grown into a large club-like appendage of muscle fibers and bone from multiple human hosts and animals. To the small minority of humans that were naturally immune to the devil worm, knowledge of the ridden is obtained only sporadically, and usually at great cost. But the most troubling theories are those that attempt to explain the ridden's social behavior. While first dismissed as nothing more than primal instinct, there is growing evidence that a greater intelligence guides their actions. 
A kind of hierarchy can sometimes be observed in their interactions with one another, and while each variant of Ridden appears only marginally related, they might in fact be component organisms of a greater whole. Rather than simply kill their victims, human survivors are sometimes taken to vast viral growths, enormous colonies of devil worms that have appeared in favorable environments. Variants have been discovered that exist only to warn others of the presence of the uninfected, while far larger creatures, assembled from dozens or potentially hundreds of human bodies, have increasingly been observed. It is possible, perhaps even likely, that the Ridden encountered so far are not merely creatures fulfilling some base instinct, but the first offspring of a new race, one whose domination over the Earth is nearly complete. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.